always love you. I never stray too far from the sidewalk. Wait, does that count as a harmony? Yeah, it does. You know that all I love is harmonies. I know that. That's why you like traveling with me. Yeah. That and I put out every city we go in. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> don't say you. No, I'm saying ew. I'm a sexual being. I don't know how many times I have to go over this. I'm a sexual being. First off, you're my sister. Second off, you're my best friend. And third off, what I was thinking of is how gross it is that some comics actually do bring people on the road because they do that. That's disgusting. And that's what I said ooh for. God, I hate men. Yeah, they're disgusting. Welcome back to this episode where we hate men. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen Barbie yet? No. I'm going to this weekend. Don't Barbie shame Where? me. Where? Don't Barbie Aren't shame me. Aren't we together me. all weekend? No, weekend. We're together all week. Ah, uh, sick. Just one more. Just these three. <laughs> oh, wait, I'll give you three, too. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to another episode of Two Dykes and a Mic. I'm Mackenzie Goodwin. Uh, I'm Ray. Sorry I, like, cut off your last name. Uh, Say it again. Let them know who you are. I'm Mackenzie Goodwin. And I'm Mackenzie Goodwin. Perfect. Erica took my last name. Did she really? Mm -hmm. Are you fucking serious? Did you go to courthouse? Did you get your paperwork? Mm -hmm. Are you legally married already? No. Oh. Well, by the time this episode comes out, yes. Oh my God. Congratulations. Thank you. Nice to have another Goodwin around. I've always liked Goodwin and I've always liked you. And Thank you. That's what actually I was, was going to say. People don't know, but everyone knows that. Yeah. I met you and I went, yes. I met you and I went, yes. Isn't that fun when you get to have that in life? Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, I was. I didn't need to be like won over or wooed. I saw you and I was like, I'll take that blonde wig. I'll take that to the bank. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. So Erica's taking your last name. Mm -hmm. So she's Erica Marie Goodwin. Wow. E-M-G. And I'm M-E-G. Very similar initials. So we're just getting rid of the last name for Erica altogether. Yeah, correct. Well, perfect. Yeah. Great, strong Strong name. If I can make this about me for a second, please. I'd like to also be a good win. You, you can, you and Nazara, feel free. We would like to. Okay. Because Nazara's last name is like the most common Muslim last name in the world. Okay. And my last name is actually belongs to my dad's dad, and he fucked off when my dad was two, and mm -hmm. no one knows who he is. So there are no Scanlans. There's no lineage. I would love to offer you up my last name. So it would be Mr. and Mrs. Rachel Goodwin. Yeah. And honestly, great for the podcast. Oh, Rachel. I would love to just confuse more people because we still get asked all the time, wait, are you guys together? Mm -hmm. And I always say yes. I, we, yes, because we are together. Well, I'm like, go listen to the podcast. Yeah. False fan. Fake fan. Fake fan. Yes, we're together. Yes, we're together. <laughs> That's what you get. Did you see that Chriselle commented on our TikTok? Of course. I'm like, we're living in a world where like fun things just happen. Yeah. Isn't that wild? Here's the thing. I'm a huge Chriselle fan. I'm a huge Chriselle head. I'm talking like number one. I don't watch reality, but when I do, it's only if Chriselle's there. I, okay. I do watch all reality. The second Chriselle's gone, I turn it off. Yeah. I say, I don't want to watch this anymore. Chriselle comes back on. I go, holy shit. I would say Chriselle is one of the most likable people on television. Number one most likable person of all time, Chriselle. Number yeah. two, Grimace. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, I think those two. She's so, and she stands the valley, and you know that we love the valley so much. I feel like we will always be valley rats. I think, well, we know that we made it when we get sold a house by Chriselle. That's my dream. Oh my God. One day. All right, this episode is sponsored by Jessica Archote. Or Archote. We're not exactly sure the pronunciation, but the sentiment is still there. Thank you so much for being a top tier patron. This episode is for you, Jessica. This one's yours, baby. And do we have to legally yeah. kiss you? Okay. So if you ever see us in public, let us know. Redeem. <laughs> Redeem. <laughs> Oh, my God. Okay, so you were telling me recently that there is a new TV show out. I don't even know if I would call it oh a TV show. Oh, my God. Are you talking about Hoochie Daddies? Yeah, I'm talking about Dude, Hoochie Dude, I don't even know. I don't even feel like we, we were originally going to dedicate, like, a full review to this show. And then we put it on and I was like, I don't think morally we should do this. I think it's I'm I'm glad that you said that because when I started watching it, I was like, this is what people are striking for. 
<sighs> this is just, it's morally not okay to produce a television show in this manner. No, I agree. I mean, the show, okay, it showed up on my FYP. I'm on lesbian TikTok and I'm seeing like people reviewing or showing the like clips, clips from the show. And me being the good dyke that I am, I was like, well, I got to go watch a bunch of like hot studs. Yeah. In Florida on a reality show, any queer reality show, I'm running at it because Agreed. I've been begging for more cre- queer reality shows. And then I watched it. It's on this app. It's free. And it was so um, the production quality is so low that it does feel like a like you worse than YouTube. Whatever. It feels like an OnlyFans reality show. It's super so low budget. It's so low budget that we couldn't like get through it. And then I was starting to like get weird out about like the morality and the f- ethics of having this many people in such a low budget, like I was just worried about. One person about, was living in a closet. They yeah. had an air mattress in a closet. It's supposed to be like a competition reality series where a bunch of masculine dykes are in the same house, and there's a host there, and they have challenges, and then they're competing for like number one hoochie daddy. Right. Everything that I have said so far sounds amazing. It sounds does. exactly like something I would watch. Can I be honest? The concept is, is there is awesome. Like I would totally watch this and I did watch it. And I was like, I l- first off love the entire cast. hundred percent. I love studs. I'm like yeah. very into studs. Very and, hot. And yeah, they're so hot. And like the whole culture that they're in, I'm like, this is like so fun to watch. Right. I just love masculine lesbians. Yeah. I think like masculine lesbians are like a very powerful, oftentimes kind of ignored, especially yeah. Yes. by like i mean we know so i was like excited to have like this many like butches studs mm-hmm. on a show they're also i'm just like the one dyke I'm, god not dyke god it was a different one one that where the host the host is also insane <laughs> is sitting kind of on a throne <laughs> and is like mildly hosting the show yeah. but there's one point where the host is like hey are you all okay with your sleeping arrangements and then the one stud is like i mean i'm on an air mattress so i thought that was kind of weird and i am in a closet which kind of sucks but okay and i'm like they are the sweetest people of all time but i'm also like this is ethically wrong that's what i'm thinking too where i was like i don't think we should dedicate like a full review to it because i'm like something about it feels wrong they're taking advantage of these women right so but it was it's be, be, it's being heavily discussed on TikTok or shown, and the theme song has been stuck in my head. Yeah. Hoochie daddies, come outside. It's it's in here. Yeah, it's stuck in my wheel, and um, I just what I guess instead of reviewing the show is I think I'm begging for more masculine women and studs in reality show programming. I want this, but but produced by VH1. Yeah. Because I think that there needs to be a lot more oversight. What they're doing, like what they're winning is a trip to Jamaica and what a, a chain. chain. Yeah, a chain. I'm like, even though, you it's know, offensive. Like, do you know the level of, um, you remember the VH1 shows when we were in high school? Yeah, Love and Hip, or uh, Rock of it? Love. Rock of Love. And like even the spinoff with like, I Love New York. Yes, that's the level I want. Yeah, where they're still like in a insane house. Show. Like yeah. we know they're not like finding love. Like No, but they have a mattress. They're being yes, they're fed. in a mansion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's more than one camera guy. I mean, it to me <laughs> feels like it feels seedy. Yeah. It feels like they are not treating these people with respect. They're not, they're definitely not paying them. Yeah. I'm like, it to me is like they're taking advantage of people that they found. Right. And that, I'm like, it doesn't feel right. Yeah, something about it definitely is bizarre and strange. Yeah. But I want more programming like this but just done better i want queer competition shows because i know you're, i mean queer people in general are fucking competitive well, there is no one more competitive than a lesbian i mean amelia Earhart. hi was you like, think she's yeah, just I'm like trying to fl- yeah i want to be the first please there's always i feel like anybody that's trying to be the first at something they're queer, queer. yeah yeah 100 percent the fucking wright brothers exactly flying planes homos <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think that the there's a, there's this beautiful, healthy competition within the queer community that I think straight people don't know about because straight people think that they're they only know about queerness from whatever they've seen, not right. from firsthand. Like they don't know how often we're arm wrestling each other. Constantly, they don't know how often I'm looking into the eyes of another dyke and being like, "Race me to this tree and back." Yeah, could I take you? Right, sizing you up. I mean, that's it, I. That's why I really enjoyed watching these clips of Hoochie Daddies because I was like. <laughs> This is a part of the community that I want to see more of. This right. isn't like your two femmes kissing each other and it's a bond drum set right. in the 
200 BCE. I don't know what the fuck, <laughs> yeah. but like where either of them died. You know, I'm like, this is queer content that I really have never seen before and yeah. I want more of. We all do. Please. I want more hoochie daddies. I want life. more hoochie daddies. That but being just not said, hoochie daddies. I feel a lot like a hoochie daddy. You give hoochie daddy energy. Do you know what I've been wearing lately? Hmm. Cut off, cropped, open button ups with just a sports bra. Oh, I, I like that. Whoa. Sorry, <laughs> I do. Uh-oh. Uh oh. I'm a, married, daddy. I'm a married woman. Yeah, you're a taken woman. I'm taken. And so am Unless I. Unless you become a good one. I'm Ray Goodwin. <gasps> Ray Goodwin's great. Ray Goodwin. Listen, think about it. I'm throwing it out there. We're trying to get the Goodwin clan bigger. I want to take your as name. Of now, it's like four. I want, you know, I want to take your name. Okay. So Mr. and Mrs. Ray Nazara Goodwin. Nazara Goodwin sounds great too. Nazara Goodwin sounds great. Listen, Goodwin is two positives. Mm hmm. It's a good. And it's a win. Yeah. Um, so would you mind if we got matching rings as you guys? Sure. You would mind or you wouldn't? Would not. Good, because we already did. <laughs> <laughs> Boing! All right, let's get into the episode today. We have an Ask a Dyke. Oh, this is going to be a good one. All right, let's fly it in. got to ask a dyke tonight. I've got to ask a dyke tonight. I've got to know. Do you have the Ask a Dyke? I have the Ask a Dyke up. Okay, and if you guys have an Ask a Dyke and you want to hear it on the podcast, you can email us at two dykes and a mic at gmail.com or you can send it to the Dyke Hotline if you want to leave a voicemail. And the Dyke Hotline is in the description of this podcast. Let's do it. All right, ready? Hi, Rachel and Mackenzie. I've got an Ask a Dyke for you. Friendship edition. Friendship edition, as I'm happily married to a gorgeous golden retriever energy lesbian. We eloped in Iceland last year. Not even remotely relevant, just bragging. And honestly, yeah, that's a huge brag. That's fucking sick. That's awesome. Okay, I have a small gaggle of gays, mainly friends I met playing soccer. Shocking. Of course. We live in Calgary, AB, and there isn't a big gay scene, so it can be tough to make queer friends. We hear this all the time. Mm -hmm. One of our best friends is chronically single, but has an interesting dating pattern. About once a year, she'll meet a girl on Tinder, date her for two to three months, introduce us to her, continue dating another one to two months, and then break up with her. The problem is, is that we absolutely adore some of the girls that she's dated. They would click in our friend group so seamlessly. We would get to know them over a few months and then get a bit attached and bam, our friend dumps them. This friend has some struggles with anxiety and jokes that she's worried we will replace her. She's said that we can still be friends with her exes, but it doesn't seem, she doesn't seem to mean it and is really uncomfortable when it's brought up. Plus, she already gets upset if any of our group hangs out with her and I can't imagine one of adding one of her exes into that equation. Without her? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, sorry, without her. She just dumped this really great girl with our um, who our whole group is still maintaining contact with over text and Instagram. But we want to be actual friends and be able to invite her over and go get coffee and drinks with her. So we're just scared that this drama might follow us. Ooh. So what are your thoughts? Is it okay to be friends with your friend's ex? Oh, my God. Oh my God, what a good question. That is a great question. We haven't gotten this question before. And I do feel like there has to be some type of queer code that we're following. Yeah, because I have had, I've had times where I've wanted to be friends with my friend's ex. Mm -hmm. But I've always done that you, if the relationship is long and the breakup's messy, you just can't. Yeah. You have to, I know it sucks, but you kind of do have to pick one at least the one that you're going to be close to. You can still be acquaintances with the other, mm -hmm. but I think if you're going to be very close, you've got to pick one. Right. But I've... Yeah, because it... Yeah. Well, I've always looked at my friendships like like trees. Mm -hmm. And I feel like on the inside of the tree, where the butter would be, yeah. which I think trees go bark, 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 butter. The core is butter. The core is butter. That's like you remember you, Angry Beavers? Yeah. They're kind of... Yeah. So I'm the butter. Uh -huh. Every ring... Is kind of like your friend. Mm -hmm. And there's your outside barks and then your inside barks. Mm -hmm. If your inside barks were kind of like all together and one of them was like horrible to the other one, yeah. they can't all stay on inside barks. Inside yeah. barks all have to like each other and get yeah. along. If there's enemies, you kind of slowly have to push one yeah. a little bit more further. It doesn't mean they have to be outside of the tree, but they can't be as close to the inside true because there is just like there is a weirdness of loyalty where if you're going to be that close to me we're going to be able to share things with each other like a level of trust yeah that like you have to know that it won't go to somebody who has like 
genuinely broken your heart. Yeah. Unless there is a ton of time from it. But even then, this is where I'm like, I know queer friendships are hard to find. Like sometimes you're they are, but if this person like I, I guess what I've done in the past, yeah, I'm actually gonna break from that for this person. They ask. Because I think that this person keeps having this exact same pattern and is dating people but then dumping them. And I if I were this friend, I would tell the person, hey, I really like some of your exes and I want them to be in our inner circle. So you're gonna have to be okay with that. Hmm. Bold. I know. I think like this it has to be situational. Yeah. Because like I think the queer code in general is if there's a messy breakup. You if pick your friend. Agreed. Every time. But this doesn't seem to be messy. That's what I'm saying. If I'm this saying, was like, if we're in Shane territory, yeah. where you like, if, if, I mean, imagine Alice and Bet and the whole gang at the planet never let another friend if, in if Shane had like, in a, a fucked them. Right. Then you could never have any person in Los Angeles. That's what I'm saying is this person seems to be blowing through people within three to five months. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem to be messy. And then you're, there's not a lot of people in Calgary. Yeah. I'm so wondering too. It's just so, cause like when I first read this Ask a Dyke, I was like, it doesn't, I'm like, just make new friends. Like yeah. how many people can this person have dated? But like, because it's just weird. I think I would feel weird. But then when you think about the numbers, right. I'm upon hearing it a second time, I'm more concerned that this friend is already getting like, don't hang out without me. Right. Does, hates when you like bring like, that person feels a little like Unstable. thinking that so, like people belong to you just because you've slept with them. I don't want to, I don't want to over speak, right. but there seems to be a little bit of like unhealthiness within there. Where like, if you know that you're somebody who casually dates yeah. women frequently, then like eventually there comes to a point where it's like, you can't care that deeply no. about holding on to them and not letting your friends, like if you're burning through that many of them, then it has to be a little bit. Or even your friends hanging out without you. Yeah. You can't be upset about that. Right. We're grown trees. Yeah. I've had this happen to me. And I think I've talked about it on the podcast where I did, I was dating somebody for a brief amount of time, like very small, but the breakup was kind of messy and there was some weird stuff going on there. And my friend started hanging out with her mm. and I told the friend, I made it very obvious. I was like, Hey, that makes me uncomfortable, but it was more for my safety. Yeah. Um, and the friend totally disregarded it, kept hanging out with her. And I was like, Hey, this has gotten to a point where I can no longer hang out with you. And then I told them that. And then they started dating. Ew. Yeah. So it was like, there's, I would ask, I would just be very open with this friend and communicate your feelings yeah. to them. And I think it should be okay. Yeah. Especially if you're not doing it behind their back. Cause right. then that person will be validated and being yeah. like, you guys are just sneaking on without me. Like, why is this so weird? No, it's like, we know we care about your feelings. Right. We just have to tell you. Right. And yeah. like thing, even as once again, I know things sound like very scary to bring things up right out in the open, but mm -hmm. it's very freeing and it doesn't have to be a huge conversation. It can be as little as, I know that you guys were together for a shorter amount of time. Maybe even asking. Yeah. Like, would you be comfortable? I know that you guys didn't work out, but yeah. we would really like to be friends with this person. It's not even like you're asking to fuck them, which by the way, happens all the time in the queer community. Right. My two exes met each other one time and they fucking hit it off. And I was like, oh, right. I have to get comfortable with like yeah. this like trope of the lesbian community actually happening in real time it happens all the time the all other the time. day i was hanging out with erica and her ex right <laughs> i'm like it and it doesn't even phase me because here's the thing if you are comfortable and you are confident i think self-conscious people are people that have like a little bit of a wavering ego mm -hmm. those are the people that care right i'm like just be secure in yourself and your relationship and then it's fine to hang out with people that are exes yeah and maybe this part can go to the people who have exes and you feel like you're worried about what place they'll fall into within the queer community of your queer bubble yeah just because you dated somebody or had a romantic experience with somebody doesn't mean that then they're off limits to the entire queer world like no. we are a smaller community and like we're you're gonna see each other at the fucking Haim concert you're gonna run into each other your friends are gonna be like oh my gosh i dated this person yeah. and people change and grow and life is really long and the queer community is really a beautiful place where we can all kind of like whatever it doesn't have to be 
like the bro code of like no. din, 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 you know like unless it's messy unless somebody hurts you or there was something where it's like about your safety if it's super toxic and unsafe yeah. like communicate that to your Friend. people yeah but if it's just a matter of like you've been kind of burning through people a lot and in your head you're like well, that person's my ex. Just know that they have other identities to them than being your ex. They're also like yes. somebody who just could be a good friend. Or well, And also everybody deserves love and friendship. Yeah. Period. So, yeah, I think as a friend, I would just be open and honest with your friend who's blowing through all of Calgary. You fucking hats off to I'm them. I'm like, yeah, great. But good for you. Maybe cool. It. Maybe. Well, I don't know. We'll be there. True. So come see our show and bring all those exes. <laughs> <laughs> okay we have a bumble fumble wait can i i'm wondering if i've ever befriended an ex in, of somebody or like in my friend group where i'm like oh no you haven't or you have i really don't think because now I, at this point in my life you're my only friend mm-hmm. <sighs> and i don't know any of your exes i know your ex's exes you know some of my exes, but you haven't hung out with them. Like who? Man. You don't like go hang oh, out yeah. with her. But I in my I don't hang out with anyone. Yeah. And that's the way I like it. That is the way to do it. The, I, everyone's asking, well, well, what do I do? Who do I hang out with? How about this? Hang out with no one. I mean, that's go find I, God. Get off the Internet. Go on a hike. Yeah, that's what I do. I'm like, listen, I've got two solid friends same and that's all you need I, as an adult you, you need, don't need more than two fucking you need friends. two good ones dude all these people that are like oh my god i don't even know i've invited too many people for my birthday party uh-uh y- you got first of all who's having a birthday party you know we survived a pandemic had, you know who's never had that problem this guy fucking yeah i've invited too little <laughs> two people total to my birthday <laughs> i don't need a group of friends i've got fucking two friends one Mackenzie Goodwin, yeah. two my therapist. <laughs> That's all the friends I need. Get some dogs. Literally, get a dog, get a <laughs> hobby, get the fuck out of my face. I just turn so on them. This is an anti friendship podcast yeah. now. <laughs> this podcast is hey lesbians, what's up with all the fucking friends? <laughs> I see you all coming out to our shows and troves. What's the fucking deal? It's we're just jealous. <laughs> we're too jealous. We have no friends. Thinking about people trying to make friends with me lately, and I'm like, <laughs> you are Dude, like that. Wait, truly, same though. Dude, you, people, you know me. Yeah. I give off the energy of like, don't fucking talk to me. Yeah, you. No one would dare to ask you to hang out. People ask me to hang out, and I go, <laughs> <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> like, I'm never. I'm like, will I ever make another fucking friend in my life? I wrote down a list of who I would want at my wedding, and I was like, no one. <laughs> that's me i literally was like great no, no one. one truly i'm like please all these who do i have friends i want to be friend and i'm like oh my god please <gasps> watch me sit at home with nazara till the day that i die her and i holding hands two shriveled up worms no one even knows us anymore both crying both crying so hard <laughs> i'm still sorry i hit her head <laughs> All right, do we have a bumble fumble? We do. Quit trying to pull focus on whatever is going on with you, man. Oh, I'm pulling focus. Yeah, you're kind of falling apart today on the episode. Can we get back to the regularly (laughs) scheduled, happy, like, you know me, uh, queer friendship podcast? Kenzie loves to pull focus. I'm like, (laughs) damn, what's going on at home, Kenz? You seem fucking weird today. (laughs) Let's read a bumble fumble, please. My cheeks hurt today. Is this a public episode? Yeah. Christ. (laughs) Sorry, this is giving energy of a private episode. I thought it was private the whole time. <laughs> okay. Hey, Dykes. First of all, I just started listening to the show uh, on my friend's recommendation. Okay, Brag. Johnny, come lately. <laughs> Brag, also friend. friend? <laughs> I'm loving it. Okay, here's my bumble fumble. Note, both me and the other person in this story use they, them pronouns. Hot. I met B in January of 2020 volunteering on a political campaign. Hot. That is actually very hot. You know what I miss? Mm. Side note. House of Cards. Robin Wright's jaw. Yeah. On my television. Yep. A Every- politi- back when like pol- political things were fun because it wasn't so fucking scary and yeah. sad. Yeah. You know what I miss? Mm. I miss like when we were kind of thinking Kamala might be president. Yeah. Do you remember when we were like, it she could, could take it yeah. all the way? Yeah. 
But now everyone's just like, Trump's getting indicted. But I really liked that kind of sexy Democrat energy. There was a time where Maya Rudolph was playing Kamala every, every weekend. Week. Yeah. And the Blazers were coming out. And I was like, God, I'm horny. horny. Yeah. I just feel like we're missing a, a horniness in politics that used to be. Like, we used Do to you be. know why? Why? They're all script keepers. Oh, They're yeah. all so fucking old. So you we saw had that one... fucking slurpy looking snake fall apart yeah. mid sentence. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that could be anyone. That could be anyone. But we had one hot young woman, yeah, Kamala Harris, mm -hmm. come out, and we were like, "Oh my god, go 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 go!" Ooh. Right. That's how the straight community must have felt when John F. Kennedy was around. Yes. People were yes. like, "Boy, yo 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 yo, vote for him." Yeah. Yes. So I'm like, I would love just like a bomb. I think we need a new bombshell in the villa. I think so too. We haven't had a bombshell in the White House villa. That's what in I'm saying. Like a very long time. I think keep bringing them in. I think U.S. politics could learn a lot from Love, Love Island. Island. I've always said this. We've always said this We've on the podcast. We've always said this on the podcast. The White House is not enough like the villa of Love Island, yeah. UK. Casa Amor. Right. We need to Casa Amor all our politicians. Definitely the fucking Senate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let us date a bunch of new hotties, mm -hmm. and then we'll come back and see if we want any of you anymore. Yeah. And if the public votes, votes least popular... You're, you're out. out and you're replaced with even hotter, better eyebrowed, yeah. more chiseled waxed apps. yeah, person. I think this is how we should run the country. I don't know why not. And I would love Ian to be like this week yeah. on the U.S. Senate. Previously. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I feel like that's a really fun thing that we should do. There's everyone's been I'll so get... um horrible and ugly lately. I think, yeah, I think the U.S. politics needs to be hornier. 100%. And when you say hornier, you do mean that guy kind of sitting on the insurrection with the horns at the desk, right? No, I mean all voters need to be horny. I think we all need to be horny for who we're voting for. Yeah, it's Not getting... doing this. It's like... <sighs> yeah, it should be more like... <sighs> yeah. I should be... <laughs> yeah, no, say it. You should be slippery wet in the voting polls. Yeah. That's the only place you could have been going. <laughs> I should be I arrested sh at the I voting polls for being too violently horny to vote. <laughs> I should leave I'm a snail trail on the way out. Sliding. I can't get my footing right. Everyone is in line at the voting polls fully in wetsuits. Everyone's like, you know why, Kamala 2024. <laughs> We're all right. Fuck it today. <laughs> Back to this bumble fumble, which had nothing to do with what we just talked about. Yeah, why did we talk about that? They worked on a political campaign. All oh, right, Kamala. All okay. right. Anyways, so I met B in January 2020. We became friends pretty quickly. We were organizing events together for the campaign and volunteering together once COVID hit. Through 2020, we became practically inseparable and became entwined in each other's lives and friend groups. Fast forward to October 2020. Mm -hmm. B and I went to a farm to go apple and pumpkin picking. <laughs> just the two of us. I know you did. You two just friends gourd picking. Here's the thing. There's nothing more queer than picking gourds. I agree. There's nothing queer. No. Even queer sex is not even remotely no as sapphic or as just like it's you're truly, gonna fall in love it's the most lesbianic activity to go like hey let's go pick out a nice fat round gourd yeah please anyway so they're picking pumpkins <laughs> just the two of us we had a great time at the farm and then we went back to b's house to make a cozy fall dinner together stop it <laughs> we ended the night sitting by a fire in their backyard Oh my God. I mean, ask them to marry you at this yeah. point. At one point, B went in to get a blanket and asked if they could sit next to me and put the blanket over us too. I said, yeah, of course, mm -hmm. because it was cold. Yeah. Then they asked, can I put my arm around you? And I said, they could. In my head, I was thinking, oh yeah, cuddling, like friends. <laughs> friends cuddling. Reader, I'm very oblivious. Yeah. Fast forward a few months and I'm over at their place watching a movie. And again, just the two of us. They laid down on the couch and put their arms out, inviting me to lay down on the couch and cuddle while we were watching the movie. I completely froze up and forgot entirely how to be a person and do normal person things like cuddle on the couch. So I said, what's the idea here? Stop. What's the in quotes in quotes? What's, what's the, the idea, idea here? here? Hey, bu <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, bucko. Hey. 
what's the big idea here? Yeah. Okay. So what's the idea here? That is the most bizarre. Why are we like this as a community? It's we, I've done weirder things. Have you? When you get ner when I used to get nervous around people I had crushes on, mm -hmm. I would go full 1920s. Oh, you know, yeah. W one, my body wouldn't work anymore. Of course. I would make the weirdest handshakes. I would hug you and like bonk you on the head Oof. with my knee. Oof. I don't know why. Just odd, odd, bizarre things. I feel like when you get nervous on a queer date, you go full 1990s. Like, give me a peck here on the on the kisser. 1890s. 1890s. Yeah. I go accidentally to sports coach. Oh, I'm giving chest bumps. Mm -hmm. I'm taking a knee. Right, right, right. I'm pulling on a whiteboard trying to run plays. We do the weirdest things when we're nervous. Yeah. I don't know what it is about. I mean, it's about all people. It's not just the queer community. Right. When you're nervous on a date. Things will turn into uh, all of a sudden I'm talking about the Egyptian mafia. <laughs> I don't know. But I feel like at least when straight people get nervous, they have that like fake play, like playbook of like what. Do, does a straight date look like right. and then they're like i do this yeah but like queer people when we're lost and confused we go like ah. let me open the door for the valet right you're like what is going on <laughs> yeah it gets weird okay yeah. so anyways what's the idea here and they kind of just wrap their arms around me and pulled me into a cuddle okay good i was i kid you not still thinking we were just cuddling as friends come on that's i mean Okay. Shortly thereafter, I was hit all at once with romantic feelings for B. And I'm very demisexual in addition to being very oblivious. Oh, so it took a while. It seems like it took a few months. It took a whole gourd picking experience and cuddling to go, oh, wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I confided in some of our mutual friends that I like them, but I wasn't sure if they like me back. They all, they all gave me a look like B obviously likes you and they've been flirting with you for months, you idiot. This story has a happy ending. B and I confessed our feelings for each other after a very unplanned late night makeout session. And we've been together now for about two to three years. Okay, you should find out when you were together. Um, depending on whether you count October 2020 apple picking I as do. our first date. I do. Yeah. If you go apple picking with anybody, that is a first that's date. That's your girlfriend. Even if you're married, you're going, that's, that's a, first a first date. date. I hope you enjoyed this story about obliviousness and months long gay pining. Love a very demisexual, demisexual dumbass. I love the demisexual. Yeah. <laughs> um, I almost tried to take that. It's mine. Um, this is, I would like to share something, please. Um, because I do feel like, thank you for sharing that bumble thank fumble, you. by the way, of like not having any clue that you are being fully courted and, and dating like, yeah, right in front of your eyes. Yeah. It's very sweet to me. But I feel like a lot of times in the queer community, we do this thing where we're like this weird friend dance for mm -hmm. especially when like because I, I felt like when I got out of the closet, I really didn't want to find myself in like kind of predicaments of being stuck between being in love with a friend. Yeah. I had done it for years and I was like, I really want to pursue romantically. And I like learned how to do that. And I have been and, you know, since the beginning of this podcast, preaching basically every week. To be romantic. Well, to be intentional about it and be open and tell people about yeah, it. Yeah, to, to call it a date, to yeah. be flirty, to touch an arm, mm -hmm. to like lead. So you don't have to like grow a, a relationship out of a friendship. I feel like we all do. do I mean, you can, but yeah. like I definitely didn't want to. But I feel like um, I have, and I'm just so glad that like this all turned out and they've been together. That's very cute and lovely. Congratulations. And a great date that we should say is yeah. to get yourself in a fucking gourd patch or an apple. P apple picking to me is very, very sexy. Oh my a little God. apple cider. Well, and I'll, I'll say this. Apples are very sexy. Apples. They first off, Smooth. Fucking so smooth. Smooth. And wait, round. Have you heard somebody crunch into one? I'm actually not allowed to. My dentist told me not to. Oh, <laughs> I thought the U.S. government for being too horny. No. Um, yeah, apples all around are a very sexy fruit. Um, I would say one of the sexiest besides a mango. All right, <sighs> let's get into sexy fruits. All right, number one, mango. Mango is one of the hottest fruits. I'll tell you right now. I know, but I feel like, honestly, they're disgusting, too, on the inside. I think that's why it's so hot. Is it a pit or is it seeds? It's a pit. A big I have certain things that are are too much for me. Seeds, I, uh, no, seeds are not sexy. Woo. There's um, nothing about seeds that are sexy. Okay, but apple, I think, might be hotter than mango. I disagree because I think that the fact that you can slurp a mango, you can slurp an apple. Mm. Dude, you're just fucking scared of apples because you're your dentist. I am. 
If we're going mango one, apple two. Here's the thing. Tropical fruits are already going to be hotter. Tropical fruits are very sweet, very sexy. A sexy, pineapple? That's what I'm saying. Tropical fruits, you're already going to get top 10 or tropical. If you have to. You can't sneak an apple. Apple is not, it's not sexy. Sorry. What about a banana? No, bananas not sexy. They stink too much. <sighs> you don't like bananas. Bananas, they okay, stink. Okay, what about grapes? Grapes are sexy. Yeah. Because you can go. Mm-hmm. You can pop them in. Yeah. Imagine me just like, if I was sitting here right now, a yeah. handful of grapes, yeah. fucking every once in a while, I just pop one in and Here's chunk it. I don't like that. This you don't like? No. I think that's powerful. I think this is, here, here's how you know if the fruit is sexy. Mm -hmm. Were they painting it in still lifes back in the Renaissance? Right. You know, were grapes, they doing, definitely. Grapes were heavy in the, in the Renaissance paintings. Right, you're not going to see fucking Mona Lisa and then in the bottom there's her hand is like a fucking half-eaten banana. Exactly. Hell no. No. So Peach. Are we, Okay, a peach. That's See, three. I think that two peach might be. It second. goes mango, peach, apple. I, I'm telling you, apple's not in the top. Why don't we go peach picking? Let's go peach picking. <sighs> you and me, we'll go to Georgia. Dude, you know our friend Irene too. Yeah, she chugs limes. She fucking loves them. Sits there at a taco place. You know they serve limes at taco. Yeah. Fucking just. Lines? Teasing. You know who does that? Who? My infant niece. I think Holy that's. Shit. You know what? I'll tell Irene. You know what? Let's get Irene back <laughs> on the horn. Wow. Okay, so let's just do top three real quick. Mango, mm -hmm. peach, peach. What's the third? Grapes. Grapes. Yeah. One, two, three. Done. Done. If you pick any of these with anyone, you'll fuck them. It's over. It's over. Game it's over. Game over. It's game over. Okay. All this to say. Yeah. I would like to share something with you, please. I don't I don't think I've shared it because for the longest time, this person was listening to the podcast. Okay. And they don't anymore. So we're in the clear. How do you know that they don't? I think they might be too mad at me too. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. What happened? Safe space. Safe space. I was, I don't want to say rebounding, but I was, I had my, I was, uh, you remember I'll sometimes frequently be like, Right you before, went through a bad break. Okay. This is like, I was going through a very slutty phase because I was like about to move to Los Angeles. So yeah. I was like, let's fuck. I kind of thought of myself as a shame. You know, when you're in the grocery store and they're like, this is about to expire. Yeah. So it goes on like 50% off. That's how you felt. That was my body. Yeah. And I was like, I'm 50% mm -hmm. off. Right. I have an expiration date. Let's go. Yeah. I was also going through a breakup at this time. This person was such a good friend to me. Mm -hmm. And for like months and months, they were such good friends to me. We would hang out alone all the time. We would, uh, she, she bought me flowers a lot. Wow. She bought me a book about something that I talked about one time when we were hanging out. Okay. So can I, she took me on a romantic boat trip of the city that I was leaving and then she would send me um, letters to every place that she visited. Okay, this is a, you had a fiance. Mm -hmm. You had, I mean, this is a long term relationship. This is one of the very, very few times in my life where I actually had somebody had feelings for me and I had no idea. And you really had no idea. Genuinely, wow. I had no idea because this is one of, so I've never been the person who was liked more. I had any, this very similar thing has happened to me and I had no idea as well. I feel like there's Not as people crazy as this, in though. the world who are always like, and I had no idea because they're like the hot main character. I'm like the person who's in love with everybody. Yeah. So when it happened to me, I genuinely was had like, no idea. No, I was like, what do you mean? And people around me were like, she sends you flowers. Yeah. And she plans dates for you. And I'm like, no, we're just friends. Dude. And I would sometimes like kiss her and stuff. Ray. And, and I had no, genuinely, you, I was like, we're like just friends. Did you guys ever hook up? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. But I had no idea that she liked me. And it's not until now mm. where I look back and like other things kind of, there were some like different jealousy things that came into place. But if you were, if I feel like if you were to tell me yeah. in the middle of it, you would have been like, she likes you. I would be like, this is just a friend. What are you talking about? I have a question is because you didn't find them attractive. Or I did thought they were attractive. I mean, I think everyone's attractive and she was like my type. That's bizarre. Cause the person that I was like, oh, I had no idea. It's because I didn't find them attractive. So it went right over my head. Cause I never saw them as that. 
I never saw them as like a potential mate or a potential partner. I think this was one of those weird times where I genuinely was like, this person is a friend of mine. So this used to happen to me with men a lot. Interesting. Men would think they were dating me. I had a guy who thought he was dating me for like, <laughs> I'm not kidding, <laughs> almost a month. And I was like, oh, me and my friend keep going to dinner. And I would always split the bill. One right. time he picked up the tab, he would drop me off at home. And I was like, this is just my buddy. Like right. I'm gay. And he straight up thought we were dating for like a long time. And then oh I God. heard he had told somebody we were dating. And I was like, what? I feel like there is something to that of like, I just, I always thought that that only happened to like really hot femmes. And no. then I was like, oh, I think if it just doesn't cross your mind, <laughs> that's what I'm saying is it happened to me with women and men, but it was that, it, that I didn't cross my mind. Right. But maybe so that's funny. what it was. I think it's just, I think because queer people, we sometimes have that m blurred line of friendship, of friendship yeah. with like, we're not sure how the dating playbook goes. We mm -hmm. were like a lot of times too, when you're younger queer and you haven't kind of worked on like separating boundaries between like friendship and like, this yeah. is a date and this is a friend right. when you're still like, nah, 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 then like things can sometimes that like blurred line is what's sexy. Really? I think so. Not for me. I used to think that growing up really? for sure. Yeah. I wonder what that is. I don't know. I bet I, that's something. Do you know what I mean? Maybe. That's something. I like, were you, I, in love with a friend? Always. Mm -hmm. Almost exclusively. Did they every once in a while give you a little bit? And yeah. it would give you like a dopamine hit and then yeah. they would pull it back and you'd yes. be like, I can't wait to hang out with them again? Yes, of yeah, course. That's, yeah. Yeah. We've, we've been, we've all been, we've been through there. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. We are wait, now. This episode went from, well, we hit a little bit of Kamala, which will sometimes happen on this podcast. Always. But we went, um, don't date your friends to don't have friends. Yeah to maybe the gray area is nice <laughs> <laughs> we should end with like you should fuck your friends <laughs> always you know what go out there this is a psa for all queer people yeah. go fuck your friends if you haven't fucked your friends you're a coward i've never fucked a friend coward Wait, have i hold on hold on well we fucked those few times <laughs> shut up you asshole <laughs> <laughs> well those few times don't i don't count. think i ever have i've made out with friends mm -hmm. but i don't think i've ever fucked one I and think I've done weird. I think I've hooked up with some, but hmm. not fucked them. But not fucked? No. I've, yeah, I mean, and we all know this, and this isn't going to surprise anyone, but. Almost exclusively, right? All my friends, yeah. All my, or I've at least fucking put myself out there Tried. to be fucked. Yeah. <laughs> I've at least let them know that I'm available for a fucking. <laughs> Dude, don't say that. Don't. I, I can't believe I opened my eyes to like one of the most terrifying laughs. <laughs> a silent yeah <laughs> okay we are now gonna review are we yes we're okay. gonna review it all right we go ahead i'm no, so sorry please all you the show slip on roku on roku is a show that we're gonna be reviewing yeah we it's have. written and created by zoe lister jones who we had on a couple episodes ago and is a absolute bombshell yeah of if, a human if you're thinking to yourself hey there was a lot of chemistry on that episode you're right we all fell in love during that episode yeah and some of us have been thinking about it ever since it's me <laughs> yeah. will you give us a synopsis of the show i'd love to yeah we have our main character and she basically in a very short episode like not an hour long you know like 30 minute episodes she sleeps with people yeah. and when she comes when she wakes up from these sexual encounters she is now in a world where she is married to that person that she just slept with it's incredible it's like a comedy sci-fi heartfelt queer incredibly funny journey yes yeah so we have our main character may who you start out seeing her in a relationship with um whitmer whitmer thomas <laughs> right yeah a yeah. comedian friend that we so funny yeah. like one of the funniest comics out here mm -hmm. and um they're in a relationship but they're very like it's they've gotten into autopilot. the routine it's very autopilot yeah you'll see them like saying goodbye to each other but they're both looking down at their phones you know they're not like connecting they're not being as intentional as you would want with a partner especially at this era of or this stage of their relationship which is like they're deep in it years yeah. in and she kind of goes out one night sleeps with somebody comes 
and then wakes up married to that person. Yes. There is like also this be- without giving, I mean, cause we kind of give away the whole thing about the show, but like, as you're watching it, it does slowly unfold where you're like, you wake up and you're in the point of view of like, where is she? Yeah. Like, why are we here? Yeah. How? And there is like multiple pl- like universes happening and it is more that like fun, creative, like, F- trying to figure out like how are we gonna get what are the rules of this yeah and how is she gonna move through it yeah and one of my favorite not plot devices but i guess themes in shows and movies is wanting to get home yeah and i think that that was one of my favorite parts of like she soon comes to realize that i just want to be back with my original partner because there's so many things that i wasn't even like grateful for right or I wasn't you know noticing it as much and here I am with other people and I'm like oh man I miss that yeah it's kind of like the Wizard of Oz yeah where just you're like home. I'm I'm far from home and if I can follow this path words back yeah because there's certain parts of my personality that are way fucking worse here right I'm a coward I'm not smart enough I'm selfish I'm a drug addict like right. it is like a and I think that we all this is like such a relatable thing that everyone fucking does yeah which is like what world would happen like i'll think about what if i ended up with that girl i was closeted with yeah what would my life be like if that was the path that i just somehow stuck to or you're like we all have a one that got away you're like what would happen if that fucking worked out because like we all change so much people change so much and it's a fun or terrible game that i think a lot of us do in your hypothetical head where you're like what would happen? Or if you're in these long-term stagnant relationships and, and you're you like run through scenarios of people that you're coworkers with. Yeah. Stop. But I do find it like I told you and I told um, Zoe as well, like this is something that I used to actually do to stop liking somebody Interesting is when I would have a crush on somebody, I would imagine what my life would be like with them long-term. And I immediately would stop having a crush on them. You're like, I'm good. Yeah. Which I think is like so fascinating and kind of what happened in this of her playing out these scenarios and being like, oh, I don't like it here. Right. Which is what I would do constantly if I ever liked somebody. Yeah. The show is just like, it is so good. It's so well written. Holy shit. It It is so well produced and directed. It is funny. And you're, I'm like deeply, deeply in love with Zoe Lister Jones. Yeah. Like the way, I mean, anytime you have like the writer who is like making it, who is starring in it, those shows are phenomenal. Typically, typically those shows are like unreal good. And here's another example of like just an incredible show made by a queer person through and through and getting to like sit down and watch all of them and not be bored Mm -hmm. and be wanting to watch the next one and to be in something that is feels more creative and unique and just like. Fucking dude i know and i fucking loved it the one fucking scene where she was at the the bar and she meets yes. the woman and the, the, the lisa on the fucking <gasps> on the bar, bar top. top i literally was sitting there going this is some of the best writing the jokes hit it is yeah, so fucking funny relatable so but while being in a, a multi-universe type of show right i'm like this shit it hit it well, was so good i'll say yeah as somebody who like struggled for a long time of like the straight world or p- straight people around me really like negating the existence of lesbian sex mm-hmm. to have the universe in there where she's like getting fucked in a bathroom. Yeah. By the way, classic. I, no, I know. When you're getting fucked in a bathroom and she's coming and like that sex scene and it being like, I was like, this is validating me. This is like validating queer sex to me. Truly, I don't know I if like, that's what she was trying to do, but I was like, great. I feel like fully like represented in a way of like queer sex is oftentimes like not when you see like oh she's got a husband and then this is gonna be the thing Mm -hmm. like sometimes the the queer crazy like would it be crazy if i was in in a with a woman stuff can feel a little like um it can sometimes either not be a part of it or it will feel like you're dipping your toes in and wouldn't be crazy if we like right yeah Mm. yes yeah but this i was like they fucking (laughs) no i i can't believe how good this show is truly it blew my mind i was like okay here we are on roku what are we gonna get and it was truly 10 out of 10 i think it was like one of the best shows i've seen in 2023 where you're like yeah able to yeah that was like really good i know I I have really enjoyed it and I edged I edged the whole series because I liked it so much. Yeah, you 
took a long time to finish it. I blew right through it because I couldn't stop. Yeah. And I, I really wish we got to talk to Zoe about more about the making of it and everything. But obviously the SAG and WGA strike. strike is happening right now. So we couldn't. But we want to say, go watch this show. It is unbelievable. Yeah. The writing is so good. The acting is so good. The concept itself is really fun. Yeah. It's queer. We have like just. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I was so glad that. I had already watched the show and then we got her on and I was yeah. like, I'm fucking over here. Yeah. Starstruck. Truly. That was, yeah. So funny too. I was like blown it's away funny. by how funny it was and like tightly written, like really well written. Really good. Yeah. Great show. Go watch it. It's on Roku or weirdly if you have a Samsung TV, like I just, it was just there. Um, How many gloves would you give it? I would give this like four and a half, yeah. 4.7 gloves. It was like, fun- I would just like want more of it. I agree. I wish, I wish there was more. I mean, God, there's a lot of sex. There is a lot of sex. You know, there's that a lot is of nudity. So nice. Yeah. You I'm and I, like, I'm always asking for full frontal. We literally, every time we review a show, we're like, can we get more banging? Yes. And, and then Zoe was like, I got you. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I said, if Barbie doesn't have full frontal, I'm, I'm out. out. And Wait. here we are. We're getting a lot of sex in this show. What would you give it? Yeah. What would you rank? What? Out, how many gloves would I you give the show? Four point seven out of five. Yeah. The, I hope if there is a season two, there's more WLW. I hope there's yeah. more women. Yes. Um, but the men were also very hot. Like I thought I, the that show was fucking like long-haired. No. Yeah. Artist guy. No, I know. They were Ooh, all gorgeous. Even the men, I'm like, this is such a queer woman being like, yes. this guy's hot. It felt like queer women. Yeah, a yeah. queer woman picking. Yeah. And it was. Um, so yeah, that go check it out. We both really loved the show and it was the fucking best. I know. Incredible. All also, right. if you're looking for more full frontal, yeah. there are more movies that we, you need to catch up on and we'll watch them. All right, let's do it. Yeah. I just sent her porn. <laughs> you bitch. Wow. This has been a really wild ride of an episode. If you're still listening, thank you. We appreciate you. Come see a live show. We love you so fucking much. Go subscribe and rate the podcast. I'm Mackenzie Goodwin. I'm Rachel Scanlon. Go do something gay today.